Growing up, uh, being a minority in my area was very, very, very difficult. So, you know, every day you'd be bullied, you'd be at school, you'd get picked on. Uh, you just want to go play football. And then it's apparent the bully, the bully from school is there. And he catches your eye, you catch his eye, and immediately, fight or flight, adrenaline goes through you, and you don't want to be there. university it really became clear to me you know as you become an adult that if you're not able to uh, defend yourself appropriately correctly or your family your honor uh, it's, it's, it's very disconcerting it can, it can be depressing it can make you feel really down you know and a lot of the martial arts that I was trying to study were not really dealing with that they weren't addressing that feeling and they didn't give me the confidence to overcome this fear And then I came across, you know, the Carson Gracie Team Club. Yeah, at that time, it was in Ells Court, you know, West London. And uh, well, I could tell you some stories about, you know, because it was it was it was it was a rough club, you know. It was in, in the sense that um, because it was so close to Central London, the bouncers that were working the doors in Central London would come, and they'd come to test themselves. You see, they they basically just wanted a place to train safely before they went on the doors, you know. And who were the subjects? We were. You know, the students, the guys who were there. So, you know, many occasions we had a Russian wrestler who probably done almost 15 years of wrestling. And there I was, white belt, six months, looking at this guy, uh, what do I do? And I had to weather the storm, you know? He was there slamming me, trying to do this, trying to do that. I knew nothing, but the art taught me so much, you know? The process of getting to that point is, it's, it's, a, it's an amazing journey. It's something that's really, uh, you know, like I said, it has a lot of parallels in our, in our religion particularly with purifying the diseases of our heart, okay? So it's important that we, we, we recognize this from the outset. So jiu-jitsu is, is commonly described as the, the gentle art, but in, in simple terms, it's uh, the application of Leverage with technique used efficiently to defeat your opponent. Back on the mat, back on the mat. Keep the half guard. Elbow from the chest to the thumb and keep it. There's a lot of history in, in, in Far East Asia, but proponents or the people who really uh, made the major changes that brought it to the world were the Japanese, without a doubt. And this is where you get some of the hand-to-hand the -hand, um, combative elements that the samurai would engage in. So once the katana fell off, the spears were off, hand-to-hand, -hand, it's punching, it's hooks, it's you know, joint uh, manipulations, it's arm locks, it's you know, wrist locks. The beauty of Jiu-Jitsu is that literally it's, 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 it's like physical chess. You'll see people go from one move transition to another, from an arm lock to a triangle choke, from a shoulder lock to a wrist lock. It's a very beautiful thing to see. Once you understand it, and you know, if that means that you use both your legs, both your arms on one arm, that like we do in the arm lock, that's it. You've, you've, you've basically uh, reduced the whole fight scenario just to one position but then you've overcome them in that. Break for, hip escape, shrimping out. In terms of uh, its sort of relevance to us generally in life, um, like we talked about the sedentary nature of us, you know, and people claim to be fit and go to the gym, but they're doing everything but train. You know, they're not training, they're just sitting around, you know, they're in a state of vanity, looking at themselves, etc. And this, this is where Jiu-Jitsu and its physical aspect of it or its intensity can help you with your daily life and, 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 and improve your lifestyle because it, it, will, it will force you to understand your body better. Everybody, I, I can't see, no any exception here, 
where after the round is complete, you are angry with that person. You may be frustrated with yourself and like, ah, oh, let him do that. Oh, you know, you didn't feel animosity. You didn't feel like idiot, man. What's he doing? Why, why did you didn't feel that? I'm sure. It's correct, me. It's right, right or wrong. In in respect to Futuwa, this is this is the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, in that he would engage in wrestling, in the arts of archery, horse riding, swimming, etc. And these are the things that we need to develop. These are long lost sunnahs. The Sahaba were well known to shoot their bows, practice their archery straight after Fajr, every day. Sayyidina Umar, Sayyidina Khalid bin Walid, they would wrestle, they would engage, they would, they, they would uh, encourage their Sahaba, their fellow companions to, to wrestle. And this was their, their means of, of combat, hand-to-hand -hand combat. They were well equipped, well aware. So Qutuwa, it is in its essential, bare bones terms, the development of good character. Ultimately, once you become very capable, very able, you just can't help but then become humble because you understand the reality of it. You understand that at any time, you yourself can be defeated, you yourself can be overcome. Uh, the very nature of this art is that if you can't humble yourself as you walk through the dojo, the dojo will almost throw you out. And this is the unique thing about it, is that just because you attain a black belt or a high rank or whatever it is, that never ends.